Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another Exporting Results Struggle. This is also today's Sunday Stated Tip. Today I'm going to show you how to export both stages of an instrumental variable regression. I'm going to show you a couple different options so that you can sort of pick the option that you like the best. So there's going to be sort of three different options. We're going to look at these tables in Overleaf, and then based on which table in Overleaf you like the best, you can jump to that specific section in the video or you can simply look at all of them, look at the code for all of them, and sort of balance which table looks nice and which code you feel most comfortable using. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is table one, and again, the timestamps are gonna coordinate with these table numbers. So this is where you just output the IV regressions in separate columns. So you can see first, this is for weight, and then for length. So this right here represents the two-stage coefficient of miles per gallon using weight as an instrument. And then this here is separately the first stage estimate. I've also included the F test in the scalars below. Again, we'll talk about all of this. And then separately, I've done this IV estimate using length as an instrument for miles per gallon rather than weight. So this is separate columns. This is table one. This right here is table two, where I'm showing the first stage result as scalars with a one column regression. This is the two stage least squares coefficient on miles per gallon when I instrument miles per gallon using weight. And then you can see I've included the first stage coefficient, the first stage standard error, and the test statistic all as scalars under the column. And I've done the same thing for length. So that's another thing you can do. You can just include them as scalars. Not as easy to see, but this is table two, IV regression with scalars. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about table three real quick, which is just separate panels. So I've got, again, the two SLS estimate for the miles per gallon instrumented with weight and length on price here. And then I have a second panel where I just show the first stage and the F stat as a separate panel within the same column. I personally think this table looks the best, so I'm probably gonna spend most time on this, but again, the code for this is gonna be the most complicated. And then table four, I'm not really gonna talk about table four, I just wanna talk about real quick for table four, that if you try to rename it as like a first stage coefficient or something in your panel B, what's gonna happen is because they're two separate variables, they're just gonna be named the same. So you have two options. You can either use table three or you can rename your variable when you're doing the estimation, which I haven't done because I don't think that makes a ton of sense. But if you're confused or want to try that option, leave a comment below. All right, so now that we've got our four tables or really our three tables, let's go ahead and dive into the code for each of them. So I am going to be using this auto data and remember I'm going to est clear just to make sure I don't have any other stored results in Stata when I go to tab it or s tab it or export it. So let's go ahead and pull in this auto data. So let's go ahead and just run all of these, just run them through right quick. And again, because I don't really care about this estimation, I could choose to do this quietly and that would just suppress the result from the log, but that's fine, we'll just leave it in there. All right, so separate columns, it's gonna be exactly like we've talked about exporting a regression table results before. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've ordered them appropriately. So this, I've called it stage two in terms of the two SLS. Stage one for the first stage, you can name these whatever you want. I just wanna make sure they're in the order so I can put the titles in appropriately. And then we're doing this M groups command. Up at the top, there will be a link to the full video where I talk about group dependent variable regression tables, but this is basically just what we're doing right here. So because that's all well and good, again, nothing crazy is happening in terms of code from what we've seen before. And again, if you haven't seen it before, make sure to check out those other videos on exporting results tabs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it, and then we're gonna move on to method two. Now method two is basically just a rehashed version of what we talked about before with adding text and scalars to your regression output. Again, there'll be a video that'll pop up in the top right corner right about now. That'll take you to that full video if you're interested. I am gonna go ahead and re-estimate the two SLS because I wanna add more scalars. If I wanna add more scalars because I didn't wanna do it up here, I need to re-estimate it. So I'm just gonna clear my estimation and then I'm gonna go ahead and just do these locals for the coefficient and standard error on weight. And again, for the local F test. And then here's the stage two where I'm just going to add the scalars from the first stage. I'm gonna do the same for length. So let's go ahead and do all of that. And you can see that state is gonna tell you that it added all of these scalars. And we're just gonna call those scalars when we output our regression. So we're only gonna have two columns. So I don't need M groups. And again, I only need the miles per gallon variable from the two SOS stage because everything else is a scalar. And so we're all ready to go. 
So I will go ahead and because I'm just a little unsure what I've run, I'll run it from the S clear just to make sure I get a clean output. And we'll go ahead and run that. Now the panel data is where things are going to start getting a little dicey or a little more complicated. So I'm gonna go ahead and just re-estimate from before, just copied and pasted from above. And now here's the way that panels work. So I'm gonna estimate it two different times. I'm gonna tab out two different times where the first time I tab out, this is gonna be the top panel of the table. And below, this is going to be the second half of the table. And really what this is gonna require from me in terms of state of coding is I'm gonna to have to type up a lot of the code that you see in LaTeX when you export a table, which is fine. Once you have it once, you sort of just have it and you can copy and paste it, changes as you need it. But the first time it might be a little daunting. So if it is a little daunting as you're going through, leave a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out. But basically in panel A, I'm only gonna export the two SLS. Fragment tells STAB that, hey, there's gonna be a second part of this. So make sure you're ready to receive another S tab for a second panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this prehead. This is the code that you normally see when S tab exports a table into LaTeX. But now you need to specify that because Stata is basically like, well, I don't know what you're gonna write into a LaTeX file. So I'm just gonna let you write everything into the LaTeX file. And again, once you have this code, this code is in the comments below. Once you have this code, it becomes pretty easy. And maybe down the line, we'll talk about some modifications to this. But for now, this is really all you need to get going. For the post head, that just means what are you gonna do after the top of the table? Well, I'm going to put a bold statement that says panel A IV estimates. This is just to make sure it groups them correctly in terms of spacing. And then the scalers that we're gonna put in and we're all done. So this is just panel A, where again, the big thing is this pre and post head. Okay, so now we've got the top of the table done. And now that we've got the top of the table done, we can do the bottom of the table. So again, we're gonna fragment, but we're gonna append. So instead of replace, we're gonna add to this already existing table. And what are we adding? We're adding the first stage. Notice that I need to make sure this order is the same as the second order. I want these columns to line up correctly. So if I used weight stage two and length stage two in that order, I need to use weight stage one and length stage one here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the numbers and the titles because I don't need the numbers and the titles because I'm in the same column. I'm gonna keep weight and length for each of them. And what I'm gonna do here in the post head is this just means after the halfway, after the start of the panel, I'm gonna call it panel B first stage. This is text bold basically, and I want it to span two columns. The scalar I'm gonna add is just gonna be F stat. Now the pre foot, I just did one line. You could do like a double line here. You could do a dark line. You have a lot of options basically. I'm gonna do that double line you're used to seeing at the bottom of the table. And then I'm going to insert my footnotes. So these are my different footnotes and you can see it's just footnote size and then what I wanna put in each footnote. And then once I'm done with my footnotes, I'm gonna end tabular new line and table, and I'm done. So this is all going to be run together, and it's gonna generate that really nice table that you just saw in Overleaf. So again, with panels, this post foot and pre foot seems kind of daunting at first, but once you get the hang of it, I think it makes a lot of sense, and I think it'll be really helpful in terms of putting out a lot of nice tables. The other reason that this is really helpful is if you have a lot of different columns, you can use panels to sort of split it up and make it long rather than super wide. So we haven't talked about that. I'll talk about that in a different video, but that's another way you can use panels. We'll cover panels in another time. And then method 3B, this is just to show you that even if you rename the coefficients on your first days, just to say like first days coefficient, because they're different variables, they're gonna have different rows in your resulting table. The only way to get around this really would be to rename weight and length to be the same variable and to run a regression with that variable, which you could do. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. If you disagree with that, feel free to put it in the comments and I'll show an example in a future video. But again, the pre foot and the post foot is gonna be exactly the same as what we just saw. And here in the pre head, I used quotes. You could use quotes or not if you want to. Again, because we're using this option where the delimiter is a semicolon, 
these all don't need to be on the same line and that just gives you a lot more flexibility with this code. So that's just how it works. I'll just hit run on everything just to show you that it works top to bottom because again, that's really important when we're running state of code and these tables are gonna exactly produce the tables you just saw. So again, comment below if you've got questions, if you've got issues, or if you have a specific version of a table that you don't see that you would like to see. Otherwise, if you're finding these videos helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.